Greetings, my name is Elizabeth Ford, Ambassador of the Republic of Panama. I was accredited on September 9, 2020 in The Hague, Kingdom of the Netherlands, upon handing the letter of credentials to His Majesty, King Wilhelm Alexander. It is a privilege for me to participate in the Chairs of Public Diplomacy at the University of Ottawa and keynote lectures by, by Dr. Eugenio Marcos. I thank Diplomat Magazine from the Netherlands as well as the International Public Diplomacy Council for inviting me to address you. As in any profession, whether banker, doctor, artist, scientist, or other, the effectiveness in that position requires many related as well as non-related aspects of a person's background. I believe this is no different for a person who represents their country in a diplomatic position, whether in their home country or when posted in the accredited host country. Some of the aspects that contribute to this effectiveness include education, previous work experience, clear goals expected to be achieved, multicultural exposure, adaptability, and flexibility, amongst other soft skills, as well as knowledge in the areas identified as needs and or offers of both the local country as well as the host country. Not to be undermined are the strengths and contributions of the existing staff, if this is applicable. Each of these is important in its own way, so I will address them separately. Education is essential. Of that, there's absolutely no doubt. Regardless of what profession you wish to excel in, Knowledge is a basic tool for setting the foundation on which to build. Education must be continuous and dynamic, fulfilling basic, intermediate, and higher stages until reaching your highest possible levels. In the complex and interdependent world in which we live, it is necessary to encourage capacity building with a multidisciplinary version in diplomacy. However, some diplomatic missions require specialized knowledge for pivotal or sensitive issues in accordance with the foreign policy guidelines of each country. That is why it is essential to have a general knowledge of history, geography, international politics, math, and science, as these contribute to a coherent conversation with anyone. Being an avid reader is an additional asset since you become exposed to a variety of topics contributing to background information from which to provide well-informed opinions and ideas. Needless to say, ideally, this would be followed by further academic studies related to your work. In this case, international relations or a specialized area within the field, such as public diplomacy. Certain personal attributes may open doors, but knowledge keeps them open. Although education is extremely significant, it is superior speaking and writing skills that are of utmost importance, especially in public diplomacy. Previous work experience is a strong contributing factor to the effectiveness as a diplomatic agent. Similar to the academic background, the broader and the more relevant the work experience is, the more effective you can be in achieving goals. In mentioning goals, I refer to both the general indications that are communicated to you from home country, as well as your personal goals. These goals may be both the same and different in that your home country interests predominate, but personal goals must be set in order to achieve them. This is where the relevance of past involvement is significant since you can extract from prior experience. In this sense, if you as a public diplomacy student have no previous work experience, it would be beneficial to seek an internship in an embassy, international organization, non-governmental organization, 
private sector, or other institution that could bring the academic and its applicability together. Establishing personal goals, in addition to the national goals, is another factor towards achieving effectiveness as a diplomatic agent. In most cases, there are clear instructions from home country on how to conduct negotiations and to establish priorities. Unexpected deviations can and most probably will occur, making it necessary for the diplomatic agent to have a clear understanding of strengths and opportunities in both their home and host country. It is in this scenario where personal diplomatic skills are necessary to achieve an effective negotiation or cooperation to obtain the best possible outcome. Multicultural exposure, as well as interpersonal skills, including empathy, are not an absolute necessity, but certainly help. As a diplomatic agent, most likely you will be dealing with people from all over the world. Every person brings their background, just as you do. This background includes cultural differences, language, country and regional interests, religion if applicable, and so much more. The more you have been exposed to multicultural differences, the more you develop awareness, understanding, and intercultural communication, and the more easily you will reach common ground in situations where that is necessary. Your soft skills are a definite asset. Respect and courtesy, being proud as well as being humble, the ability to listen, teamwork, along with so many others, cannot be undermined. Be aware that as a public agent, you are the representative of your country, and the image you project is the image that reflects on your country. Adaptability and flexibility are personal traits that come in handy. This is probably true in all aspects of life, but in the diplomatic world, it may be even more so. You will be dealing with many different people and in many different situations. Plans may change from one moment to another, and it is necessary at times to simply alter a previously established course. How established objectives are achieved by each diplomatic agent is very personal regardless of whether they are instructions from your home country or due to lack of instructions proposed by you. If you are a very outgoing person, you may prefer to achieve these by personal meetings that permit your strengths to flourish. Therefore, the goals would be to develop a network of contacts in order to coordinate personal meetings. To the contrary, if you feel more comfortable working somewhat behind the scenes, Publishing articles could be a more appropriate way and therefore your goal would have to be finding the printed and or digital space in order to meet the targeted audience. It is essential for you to recognize where your personal strengths and weaknesses lie. Ideally, interchanging both approaches mentioned previously is the most effective in carrying out your role as a diplomatic agent. So, this may be the opportunity to step out of your comfort zone and empower yourself through personal growth. General knowledge of both home country as well as host country is necessary since you represent the first and are a guest in the second. However, based on established objectives, you will preferably have an in-depth knowledge in the areas identified as opportunities in one or both of the countries. I would like to share with you my personal experience. Because of a family situation, my academic education took place in several different schools and various countries, allowing for a multicultural and multilingual upbringing. My first university degree was in education and psychology, working as a teacher for several years. Due to an unexpected family circumstance, I was required to manage the family agricultural farm and export business, and later worked in the National Investment Council promoting foreign investment in Panama. This was followed by an architecture and design degree, 
and having my own business, which covered both national and international projects. Due to communication and organizational skills, in conjunction with my administrative background, I was asked to direct the State Logistics and Port Training Center, which then led to working in the International Cooperation Department at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Throughout my life, I was fortunate to be able to travel my country extensively, experiencing its beauty and tourism possibilities firsthand. Consequently, I know my country very well. The priorities established by my home country for this particular diplomatic mission were identified clearly. Among them are promoting our agricultural products, establishing bilateral cooperation in order to improve farming methods, seeking direct investment from Dutch companies, increasing opportunities for the transfer of knowledge with emphasis in logistics, water-related topics, and tourism. So, my previous work experience that might otherwise seem to be totally unrelated encompassed precisely the areas of experience necessary for this diplomatic mission. As it seems clear, neither endless years of experience in any one area nor extensive diplomatic experience is what prevails. Instead, it is the accumulation of everything added together that became my personal strengths. During any career path in today's global environment, many challenges will be faced. It is through the academic formation and public diplomacy that you will be better prepared to confront and achieve success in the diplomatic world. I wish you all the best in the path of your choice.